Hello Key Church, wonderful to be with you again, looking forward to the day when we can open church and have church normally, but uh, for today we're going to start to celebrate the month of Pentecost. Folks, Pentecost takes place at the end of this month and I'd like us to celebrate it for the whole month. So uh, let's start with a question, are the feasts of the Lord still relevant today uh, and in a sense to answer that I want to say Jesus could have died on any day of the year but he chose to lay down his life uh, at the exact time of Passover why did he do that I want to tell you because times and dates and seasons are important to God and we can learn that throughout the word of God and so I want to say that uh, this time of Pentecost is important to God and we need to celebrate it. So I want to celebrate this whole month leading up to Ascension on the 21st and Pentecost on the 31st. It's a wonderful, wonderful month and let's trust God for a real special move at this time of Pentecost. So uh, I dedicate this sermon and the next three sermons that I'm going to share uh, to Pentecost. And so uh, with that in mind, I want to lay a foundation today and uh, look a bit backwards into history. So we'll start with Shavuot. And uh, is there a link between Shavuot, which the Jews celebrate, and Pentecost that the Christians celebrate? On the same day. I want to tell you the only difference between the two words is language. It's exactly the same as in English we say Jesus and in Hebrew they say Yeshua. It's the same person just a different language and so we need to understand that it's not Shavuot as Old Testament and Pentecost as New Testament. It's the same day, it's the same thing exactly running throughout. So Pentecost is not a Christian word. The rabbis used the word in their Greek translations before Jesus was even born. So we must understand that it's, this is not Christianese. This is going all the way back uh, into the Old Testament. And Pentecost simply means 50 as compared to the Hebrew where they calculate seven sevens plus one. Uh, which brings you to the day of Shavuot from uh, Passover, the 50 days. So let's just go a little bit deeper into the roots of Pentecost because we associate Pentecost with the outpouring of the Spirit in the upper room and what a wonderful uh, place that is. I love to go there when I'm in Israel and really trust God for outpouring in that upper room. But the Jews associate Shavuot with the wheat harvest it's we're coming up to the time of the harvesting of the wheat if you understand all the biblical festivals are all related to different harvests but this is the wheat harvest and when you join the two understandings together the outpouring of the spirit at the same time as the wheat harvest we start to see that it's speaking about a harvest of souls and uh, the, the New Testament talks about wheat and tares, for instance, uh, using that um, uh, idea. So uh, I'm not making this up, folks. It's, it's in the Bible. The wheat fields of Israel are almost ripe for harvest at this very moment. If you go and Google some photos of uh, the wheat fields in Israel right now, they look beautiful. They're almost ready. Any day now they'll be ready. But let's go back to the first mention of the Spirit. Because the first mention is always important in anything that you want to talk about. So we're going to go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. The earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Folks, right 
there in the very beginning of the Bible, the Spirit of God was moving over this earth. I want to tell you, that's Pentecost, Genesis 1.2. And Genesis 41 verse 38 speaks of Joseph. Then Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find a man like this? In whom is a divine spirit. I want to tell you the only divine spirit that was in Joseph was that Holy Spirit of God. And Numbers 27, 18 says, So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay your hand on him. Folks, that young man had the spirit of God in him. And this is right going back to Moses' time. Psalm 139 verse 7, the Psalm of David. Where can I go from your spirit, David asks, or where can I flee from your presence? Isaiah 61 verse 1, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners. Let's jump to the New Testament. Matthew 3.16. This is before Jesus had died and the new covenant had been ratified, so to speak. After being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were opened. He saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove. And lighting on him. So even prior to Jesus' death uh, and going all the way back into the uh, Old Testament, the Spirit of God has been moving in this earth. Folks, I call that Pentecost. But after Jesus' death, we see Pentecost as a progressive revelation of that same Spirit of God. So next week I want to look at the ascension which is going to take place on the 21st of May on our journey to Pentecost which takes place on Sunday the 31st of May. But let's look at what John 16 7 says, Nevertheless I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I go, I will send him to you. So you could say, Pastor Nick, if the Spirit was here, why did Jesus have to send him? Let's uh, go back to the Old Testament to read from uh, the Message Bible, Jeremiah 31, 31. That's right. The time is coming when I will make a brand new covenant with Israel and Judah. It won't be a repeat of the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took their hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant even though I did my part as their master. God's decree. This is the brand new covenant that I will make with Israel when the time comes. I will put my law with Israel. In them, write it on their hearts and be their God. And they will be my people. Folks, the Spirit was always here. But now, under this new covenant, there's a new dispensation where every single one of us, that's me and you, who is born again, can be filled with the same Spirit that caused David to slay Goliath. That same power, that same spirit that welled up in David to say, man, who does this Philistine giant think he is to come against my God? That same spirit can dwell in you and in I. That wisdom that Solomon had that goes beyond a normal man's wisdom. We can have that by the spirit of God. Daniel slept like a baby in the lion's den. Could you imagine all those hungry lions around you wanting to have a piece of you and to have that peace of God in the midst of a terrible storm to put your head down, I don't know, maybe put it on the soft stomach of a hungry uh, lion and, and slept the night away because of the Spirit of God. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, 
They passed through the fire, folks. Sometimes you might feel like you're passing through fire, that the problems around you are overwhelming you. It's just going to burn you out. But these three young men that were endowed with the Spirit of God, they passed through the fire. They didn't even smell of smoke. And this is what I want to tell you. Uh, in the Old Testament, we saw the Spirit come on certain people at certain times to, achieve, uh, to achieve the purposes of God in the earth. But in this new covenant, the Holy Spirit has been poured out for all, whomsoever will, come. Uh, and, and folks, that's for you. The same Spirit. He's a person. He's not a thing. He's not just some random part of the Godhead. He's a person. He is precious Holy Spirit. And He's available to you and I that have been born again. And He wants to be on the inside of you. He wants to put God's laws uh, in your heart. No longer trying to follow the, the laws like the Israelis did uh, uh, and they failed. But uh, a new law written upon our heart by the very Spirit of God. And that's for every single one of us. And folks, we are only just touching uh, on the edges of what Holy Spirit wants to do. And let's start to believe God as we go through this month preparing our hearts for Pentecost. Let's believe God for a great double portion out pouring revival of the Spirit of God in regular men and women. This uh, dispensation that we're in is not just for some great generals of God. It's for every single one. You just have to ask Jesus into your heart and then the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you can be filled and you can speak in other tongues and you can have the power of God working on the inside of you. Folks, I want more of that for me. I, Holy Spirit, I love you and I want more of you in my life. But for every one of the viewers, I pray that you strengthen them in their inner man with the Holy Ghost, that you set them ablaze for you that we can go into a new time of seeing the Spirit of God move in the earth of God like never before. Let's pray folks. Holy Spirit pour out upon your people. Come like the rain. Come like living water. Come like fire. Come like the wind. Come however you choose to come, Holy Spirit, but touch your church in this time. While the world is thinking the church is going to go under because of Corona and lockdown, Lord, I believe it's a wonderful time for a great move of the Spirit of God in the earth. And I pray, God, that you have your way. And Lord, as we heading towards Pentecost, put an expectation in our hearts. Do a work in me, Lord. Put an expectation in my heart for the power of God, that I'll start to move more in power, gifts of God, and more with the authority of God that cannot come from myself, but only comes from the power of, and the presence and the Spirit of God. And I pray that for each one that's listening to this recording, that the power of God come upon them where they are right now. I ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen.